While I'm waiting for the Florida heat to dissipate so that I can continue building my steam boiler, I've decided to embark on another journey, and that is building a diesel generator, which of course requires buying a diesel engine. And there's many online right now. They all seem to come from the same factory, but there's a lot of distributors. There seems to be two basic sizes, a six horsepower and a nine horsepower. Some of them are calling this a 10 horsepower, but who knows. The particular distributor that I chose was one where a customer had reported receiving the engine damaged and stated that the distributor immediately replaced the parts, so that was important to me. And let's talk about how I received this one. It came in a cardboard box surrounded by crushed styrofoam. I literally watched the UPS guy flip it off the back of the truck. It went about two feet through the air crashed into the ground. That drove the PTO shaft right through the side of the box. Show you a little picture here. But other than that, the engine arrived in pretty good shape. There's a very slight indentation on the fuel tank and a very slight indentation in the heat shield, but they're so slight they don't even show up on a video, so and it's superficial stuff. Uh, the engine came with an owner's manual that's pretty good. has a lot of specifications, a lot of blow-ups and part numbers. The only aggravating thing is these part numbers don't correspond with this picture. You have to flip back and forth and find the right page. But it, it's okay. It works. It also came with a crushed extra fuel filter, which will probably work. An extra air filter and a little downspout for the exhaust. I have run this engine for about an hour prior to this video so that I could identify any issues. It runs very smooth, it runs very cool. The hottest point I could find was the exhaust header. It was about 230 degrees. I checked all around the head at its hottest point, what should be its hottest point, and couldn't find anything above 200 degrees. In running for about an hour with no load at 2400 RPMs, it consumed a very small amount of fuel out of this small tank. I did put 1540 diesel lubricant in it. it, takes about a half a gallon, obviously some diesel fuel. And the only thing I had to do prior to starting was bleed the line, which just requires loosening this nut cycling the engine several times until it drips oil and then tightening the nut back up. After an hour of running I noticed that there was some spent fuel, burnt fuel, getting spit out of here and found out that these were just barely snug so I tightened them up no issue after that. So it's a pretty good little engine let's get it down well I'm just do a 360 here Let's get it down off the dolly and onto the pads and get it started up. See it run. So we're down off the dolly. We're on some foam pads. I will say that this engine has insane compression and you really have to follow the starting procedure. And the starting procedure is cycle it until you're into your compression stroke and you can't cycle it anymore. Engage your compression release and you're ready to go. What's going to happen is that is pushed down on the exhaust valve which is going to get you through your compression stroke with no compression because the exhaust valve is now open. It'll get you through your combustion stroke. During your exhaust stroke the engine is going to begin to open the exhaust valve on its own which releases the pressure from this and it flips open. 
Now the exhaust valve is open because of the engine, so you still have a nice exhaust stroke. You're going to get an intake stroke, and then you're going to get a real compression stroke with the exhaust valve closed. And hopefully the momentum of previously spinning it gets you through that compression stroke and fires the engine. So let's do it. I'm going to turn the fuel on. I'm going to set the governor at about halfway. And if this jumps off the pads and starts dancing around on my patio, just give me a minute, I'll get it back in place. little engine so if you just wanted to see it run that's it could I throttle back and forth and go to different speeds yes trust me it does it I'm trying to run it at a, at a steady speed get it broken in as far as the generator um, I'm just gonna get in here and talk about my imaginary Winco generator head I chose a Winco 4800 it's on the way I've been through lots of hurricanes. You really never use more than 4800 unless you're going to jump into an entire new class of generator. Uh, really what you run is your water pump, your refrigerator, fans, and the only time the Jenny really loads up is when the water pump kicks on. You know, you're not running a hot water heater generally. But I want to detune this. I, I want this engine to run at about 2400 RPM belt up two to three so that when this is at 2400 rpm the generator head is running at 3600 rpm i don't know how well the governor is going to work if you know anything about generators you know that it really comes down to this governor and a governor has to work smoothly and effectively to keep you in that 60 hertz range so the only way I can tell is to hook up a generator head and have at it. And uh, my next video will be when that arrives and I'll get everything mounted and we'll see how it goes. And just real quick, I looked really hard at the Harbor Freight generator head, 7500 watt. Number one, I'm not going to use 7500 watts. By the time you add up the tax and shipping, it came to about uh, $440, which is the same amount I'm paying for the Winco with free shipping. Less watts, more peace of mind, and like I said, 4800 is plenty, and it should uh, work well with this engine. We'll see you on the next vid. Thanks for watching.